Hello everybody, my name is Anders Dahlberg, a researcher in mycology focused on their ecology and conservation, uh, active in Uppsala. And I will talk a little bit about the effects of clear cutting on mycorrhizal fungi. And I hope this recorded version will uh, work out well for that purpose. Fungi can constitute an amazingly species rich and diverse group of organisms in forest ecosystems. Mycorrhizal fungi is one of those. And they consist of species that uh, are closely associated with the trees, where the trees obtain the nutrients and water from the mycorrhizal fungi, and the mycorrhizal fungi they re rely on energy, on carbohydrates from the from the trees. And you can see in this picture in the center here how the the hyphae really exploit the soil and, and extend the root system of the trees with a factor of 10 to 1000, depending on the humidity conditions in the, in the forest. There are many ectomycorrhizal fungal species in the Nordic countries uh, in the range of 2000, many more than the trees they associate with. Roughly 10% of them are red listed. And uh, looking into single stands is often 100 or 200 species present. Uh, it depends, of course, of the, the age of the forest, the history of the forest, and the type of, of, of uh, stand and size and so forth. Um, recent molecular analysis, DNA identification of forest soils, also reveals that there are a substantial number of species that never shows up as, as obvious sporocops. Most of the red listed species, they are largely or exclusively confined to old growth forest conditions. Fungi consist of distinct mycelia that occupy discrete uh, volumes in soil. And the mycorrhizal fungi, they typically are in the size of square meters to several square meters and sometimes up to even 100 square meters. Uh, they are perennial and may be living as long as the trees are living or even longer if the, there is a continuous presence of the trees. Uh, this is a picture to, a little bit to visualize how the, the pattern may look like. Clear cutting has a major impact on the community of mycorrhizal fungi as they rely on energy from the trees. So when the trees are cut and the flow of sugar down to the roots and out to the hyphae of mycorrhizal fungi, the fungi they seize and uh, over time dies out. Uh, they may survive, the mycelia may survive on the roots up to a year uh, on the stumps and they will survive on left small seedlings and left trees. A few years ago we conducted a study in northern Sweden to see the impact over time of clear cutting with different levels of left trees. Uh, so we had a one treatment was full clear cutting, one was with 30% left trees and one with 60% left trees and, and we had intact forest. And uh, then we followed up uh, the amount of mycorrhiza in the soil by molecular analysis. Uh, and after one year, there was still mycorrhiza in the soil, uh, probably surviving on the roots uh, of the cut trees. Uh, but after three years, they were almost gone. There is a small portion here and probably surviving on the small seedlings that were left on the site. But with increasing in numbers of trees, there was a higher amount of mycorrhiza um, left. Here is sort of a reference line with all trees left. And these results, they correspond very well to other studies where there is a good relationship between the amount of mycorrhiza fungi or uh, the diversity of the species rich in the mycorrhizal fungi and the amount of trees or the, the photosynthetic production of the trees. So it's more or less an, a linear relationship between, between those two components. Uh, looking into the total fungal community in the soil, the major impact on, is on the mycorrhizal fungi naturally. 
as they are dependent on the energy from the trees. So here's a study from uh, southern Sweden showing where where uh, different age stands of different age of Scots pine were uh, followed by molecular analysis of the fungal community in the soil. And there is an initial di disappearance of the mycorrhizal fungi. They, they disappear totally, almost, uh, just after clear cutting. And there is a low proportion after a few years. And then they, again, start to constitute a sort of significant portion of the, of the fungal, uh, total fungal community in the soil. But there are, of course, species differences. Looking into the individual groups or species of mycorrhizal fungi, it's obvious that uh, they differ. Some species handle the clear cut conditions, uh, manage to survive, and can recolonize at a much quicker sp speed than others. One of those groups are the corticoid, an important group, corticoid fung fungi that form very inconspicuous sporocot, but are very important in the for 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 the mycorrhizal symbiosis. They they constitute a quite large portion of the fungal community in the uh, early succession of forest, whereas it takes much, much longer time for Russula species and Cortinaria species. And some of those may even not be able to uh, return before it's time for clear cutting again. Uh, mycelia, as I said, they may survive along forest edges on retention trees or seed trees. And if they do that, it's sort of not further away than 10 meters commonly. It's the most abundant, the majority of the mycorrhiza, they are within the dripping zone of the, the crown of the trees. And some mycelia may also survive on, on left seedlings on the site. But the overall majority of the mycorrhiza fungi disappear uh, following clear cutting. It takes time for the mycorrhizal community to return. And we followed this uh, in Scott's pine stand, which had been clear cut up to 50 years ago, and in comparison with old natural stands using DNA identification of the fungi in the soil. Doing so, we compared how similar they were. So the composition of the older forest is shown here in this dotted line. The, the time since clear cutting is shown here and how similar the community were compared to the forest, to the community in the old forest is on this line here. Each dot represents one forest stand. So uh, stands that were clear cut uh, recently, they were much more different than stands that were clear cut 40 or, or 60 years ago. So it takes time for the, for the community re to return. And that is due to that it's just a very common uh, my, uh, species that survive as mycelia on the few seedlings or the few trees left on site. Uh, there is a very limited spore bank in the soil, and most species have to recolonize from nearby stands, and then it's then relying to a large extent on which species ac are actually present in the nearby forest. Therefore, therefore rare species has beside changing environmental condition, severe difficulties to become re-established after clear cutting. There is a major difference between clear cutting management and Kunesh cover forestry regarding impact on the micrograss community. Uh, the community drops to very low levels after each cutting operation and has to recolonize in contrast to continuous cover forestry where the, the community is kept on a high level continuously due to the continuous presence of the tree and that the mycelia, mycelia can continue to, to live. So thereby the impact is much, much smaller. To sum up, clear cutting have a strong impact on mycorrhizal fungi. They largely disappear following cutting. It's only mycelia associated with left trees or seedling that survive. More trees, higher survival, more species survive. The community is rather unaffected by continuous cover forest due to the many, many trees left. Um, Macrosa fungi have long-lived mycelia that may become as old or even older than the trees. And rare species uh, have severe difficulties in uh, under clear cut, cut forest management and hence need protected forest to 
continue to be present in the future forest landscape.